Awesome. Yeah, and so great to be with you guys today. You too. Good to see you. Yeah, Lisa Bender team and and Premier Mortgage in the house. In the house. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, we just came off a so really fun. good, yeah. really good lunch, right? Yeah. Had some tacos. Went to Azul's in Mill Creek. Ooh. That's a free shout out, Azul's. Oh. That's right. Delicious. Delish. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had some waters, and what did you guys have? Strawberry. Strawberry, strawberry lemonade. Mango, mango lemonade. lemonade. Mango lemonade. Arnold Palmer. Ooh, good old <laughs> Arnie. It's good stuff. Yeah. Well, I love being with you guys today. We're happy to have you. Yeah. Well, I know we had some stuff we wanted to talk about to share with our friends eavesdropping on us. Um, what What were you thinking, Lisa? I was thinking maybe you could talk about TPA programs to start with. Absolutely. I think in Washington State, we have one of the strongest DPA programs um, that I've seen, at least on the, on the West Coast, you know, where I'm licensed. I've seen different things. And I tell people all the time that it's as close to free money as you can get without it being free money. You know, at Washington State Housing Finance Commission, they have an amazing program where a buyer can take this class and get their down payment on a FHA or conventional loan. And they'll cover the 3.5% on an FHA loan. They'll cover the 3% on a conventional loan. And they actually will give you up to 4% to even help with some of those closing costs. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. They're actually going to help pay for some of those closing costs, which are typically, you know, they add up. And it's one of those beautiful things because right now in this market, it's so competitive. And you may have a buyer who has perfect credit, who's got great income, but maybe they haven't saved up $60,000. Yep. And this is an opportunity for them to still get into a house and just really worry about the closing costs. Mm -hmm. um, it's not free money. It is like a grant. So it's one of those things that we in lending, we call it a silent second, just kind of sits on your home and it's in the background. And you know, when you sell the home in 15, 20, 30 years, it gets paid off with the proceeds. Um, but you don't make any payments on it, 0% interest. Mm. And it's an amazing, amazing program for any buyers out there. I know there's some lenders that don't do it. You know, a lot of the bigger lenders that are maybe online, um, you know, online only lenders, they can't do those things because it's so state specific. Um, but it's a wonderful program for your first time home buyers and second and third time home buyers too. I mean, it's not just limited to those first timers. Mm -hmm. Are they allowed to have any? money set aside for like an appraisal gap. So like, can we like dovetail that? Like now their down payment instead of being the down payment is the appraisal gap. Absolutely. Yeah. You can still, you could bring in extra money if you needed to, you can have it for that appraisal gap as well. Um, you're not limited to just, let's say if it's an FHA loan, you borrow the three and a half percent from the state, you could still bring in, you know, another $10,000 if you needed to just to bring it down. Um, a lot of people, though, the reason why they're using the program is because they don't have that extra ten thousand dollars. Right. But absolutely, you can kind of mix and match it, and it's a really, really good program for, um, you know, first-time home buyers, people who maybe who are um, having a tough time with debt-to-income ratio. Uh, if you have a credit score over six hundred and forty, you can actually have a fifty percent debt-to-income ratio with the program, which is really, I mean, it's pretty high. So they can have, you know, buy a lot of house with this program. And um, the state, you know, they, they really have done a good job at creating this place for, for buyers. And they can check it out at WSHFC.org. And it's a really, really, really good program. I would recommend anybody go out there and look at it. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What about jumbo loans? Oh, well, you guys could probably speak to this better than me, but the prices up here are... Um, astronomical astronomical <laughs> right that's one way to put it <laughs> but i mean so you know pierce king and snohomish county i think this kind of the i-5 corridor yep. up here yep. um they kind of run together in terms of conventional conforming prices so the new jumbo loan limit for 2021 is actually 776 250 so 776 thousand two hundred fifty dollars okay so as a lender oftentimes what we want to do if we can we want to keep our loan amount underneath that number because once you go above that, you're no longer what we would call conforming. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have probably a higher interest rate. The requirements for a down payment aren't going to be the same as like a conventional loan. They're going to change depending on if your credit, what your credit score is. It could be 15 to 25% down 
if you're going to be above that 700,776 700, number. And so we really want to try to keep people below that if we can for the best pricing um, and, you know, just to kind of stay in the pocket of what's going to be reasonable for their budget. Now we recognize in this market, it's not uncommon for a home to be 1.2 and, you know, you put down 25% there, you still might not get under that jumbo loan limit. Well, we try really hard to be competitive with the jumbo pricing because we recognize more and more people are going to be in that space um, because, you know, when's the last time you listed or sold a house at 300000 Been a minute. Been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely been a minute. Hey, I just closed a condo last week, 240000 in Everett for a buyer. Killing it. So. It can be done. It can be done. <laughs> we can find them. <laughs> They're out there. But yeah, I mean, so that's kind of a hard number that we kind of look at. And those loan limits will change depending on the county. So Pierce King and Snohomish County, that's the jumbo limit in those three counties. But if you start going outside of those, you know, Thurston County, uh, Klickitas, any of these other places, the jumbo loan limits are actually lower because it's going to be based on average home prices and income. And obviously, Pierce King and Snohomish highest home prices, highest income. So those limits are really, really high. Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's it can be hard to stay underneath those limits, but it can also, depending on your buyer, it can be kind of easy to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, how did you get someone something for under 300000 I know, under 300000 How did you win that? How did you do that? Uh, well, I will say <laughs> it was the fifth offer we wrote. Mm. Wow. Um, and we lost the four others, unfortunately. Actually, that's not true. We got under contract on one, but it ended up not being the right house. Um, so in this market, that still can happen. And luckily on that property, it had been on the market for a little while. So we were able to put contingencies in place and get out of that deal. <laughs> so this one's kind of a miracle in many ways. Um, but we continued to look. Uh, my buyer was at a higher price point than 240. They could have gone to about 350. Mm. Mm. Uh, so we had been looking at properties around the 240, 250 range because when we were competing, we knew we were gonna go up about 15 to 25% depending on the property. Wow. But we had been beaten four times and it just so happened that uh, we came across a condo that had been on the market for two weeks. Wow, it's a long time. It is. <laughs> and after viewing it, we, my buyer decided that it was the right one. We didn't feel like we were going to have to compete. And an offer came in right after us, actually. Yeah. <laughs> which happens. Which yep. happens a lot in this market. Um, I've had a couple other properties that all of a sudden are competing. But uh, it was listed at 235 The other offer came in at 235 Our offer was 235 So we said that we would go up 5000 And we got it under contract at 240 that's oh. a miracle. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and we had an inspection. Wow. <laughs> what are those? I yeah. know. <laughs> I've heard no. tale of those. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we just closed it last week. Nice. Yeah. It was good. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Any wins recently? Um, yeah. I had a client, kind of similar situation, looking for that 50 price range where they'd been beaten out and they're just a really great normal couple working hard trying to buy their first house and um, we got beat out a couple different times and it was some tough losses I like to tell people that you got to have some thick skin mm. in this yeah. market right now because you can't take it personal the seller is going to take the best offer that works for them even if it doesn't make sense like even if you're we, we lost one that we were higher on, and right. it was because we had a contingency in place that another buyer didn't. So um, we kind of talked over strategy, and we ended up looking at some stuff that's been on the market for a little bit longer than that seven-day period. Yep. And we were able to get under, you know, put an offer in, and another offer was coming in. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was the same thing. It's like, and the listing agent even said it had been quiet. Nothing really had been going on, and then all of a sudden, you know, yep. a whole bunch of interest. So yeah. it's just about a matter of 
kind of reworking your strategy. After you've exhausted a couple avenues, rework your strategy and go at it from a different angle. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that really is what this whole market has taught us as agents. Mm -hmm. um, not that we haven't been competing for the last however many years yep. in this market. And that's what I tell my buyers. We all know how to compete because even before it got really crazy, we have been competing for years. Um, but this is a new level of competition. Yeah. So really working a strategy ahead of time and putting a plan in place um, making sure that you have your lending <laughs> yeah. in place yeah. before we ever start looking at homes. And whether our strategy is purely looking 100,000 less yeah. than homes, or our strategy is that we're, you know, if you have a larger down payment, we can set some of that aside in case of a low appraisal. Um, so it's not just one aspect of what. We're not just writing offers anymore. We're actually strategizing the whole time, mm -hmm. figuring out what's going to work best for each house. Yeah. Can I throw up a softball question to you guys? Should uh, your buyers get a pre-approval before you show them a house? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I think they should, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's funny how often, you know, you guys will call me and you'll be saying, yeah, they, they want me to show them houses, but they haven't talked to anybody yet. Yeah. And it's just like, in this market, I feel like uh, it's a silly phrase that I learned in, in baseball in high school, but uh, the separations and the preparation. Mm, the more yep. prepared you are, absolutely. The more ready you are to put in an offer, you know, with a pre-approval, with a you know even an underwritten pre-approval. Yep. It's yeah. income and credit. I think that which helps. Jesse does do. I, yep. I do. <laughs> not to toot my own we'll horn. Throw that in there. Um, <laughs> not to toot my own horn, but I think. You know, you guys, I watch you guys. I'm like, it's crazy right now. Yeah. You guys are waving financing. You're waving inspection. You're doing all these things. And I don't know how you guys could have the confidence in, like, waving financing if a buyer wasn't fully pre-approved by an underwriter. I didn't allow a buyer to waive financing on an offer I wrote this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because I'm not confident yeah. that <laughs> we can do that yet. And that could be the difference between you getting it or not yep. getting Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. And that's the thing right now is it's everything's on this like razor's margin. Yep. And you guys, honestly, you guys have the hard job. I just sit in the room and run numbers, but you guys are out there, you're pounding pavement. You guys are finding homes for 235. <laughs> like those houses don't exist. And that's why I, th I love working with you guys is because every time I have a client that we're working with together, I know that you're going to exhaust every single avenue to find that person a home. You know, and I like Andrew that we're currently working mm -hmm. with. I know that you, uh, I mean, you put an offer, 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 and finally we we got yep. it. Yeah, and even had one like the hardest thing too with offer review dates. You try to communicate with the listing agent mm -hmm. and stay mm -hmm. in touch with them because you want to make sure that the, the seller is going to stick to that offer review date. And so we're going to put together our offer and get it over to them because they didn't want early offers. And then, boom, it gets snatched up and even that yeah. phone call hey we can't submit your offer because it got snatched up but yeah that's where that that thick, thick skin <laughs> comes in yeah yeah that's definitely part of it too i would say even if a buyer isn't working with our team mm -hmm. any agent that they're working with one of the questions i tell buyers when i first communicate with them is to ask your agent what their strategies are because that's really a good thing for a buyer to ask an agent because we should be able to tell them what our strategies are going to be in this market. Yeah. And that's pretty much the first conversation I have is we're going to put a plan in place, obviously. Um, and if you talk to any other agents, ask them because checking in with the listing agents right now is very important. Yeah. I call as soon as I leave a house if we like it, even if the offer reviews seven days mm -hmm. away. Um, so that they know I'm interested and I want to call. I follow up with an email <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of times now, pre-inspections, Yeah. which is great. And so we can get those sometimes. <laughs> um, but I think that's important for buyers to, to make sure that they know what their agent is doing. I agree. <laughs> that's why you're good at this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's really good advice. What else did I have for you? 
because we're going to talk about uh, credit requirements. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we hear one of the biggest questions I get as a lender is, where does my credit score have to be, right? Mm -hmm. What credit do I need to have? Um, because I think credit is kind of nebulous. No one really, no one really understands it. <laughs> you know, like how do you raise your credit score? Sometimes it's as easy as paying stuff off. Right. Other times, who knows? You know, and so when we pull credit, what we always do is we uh, we pull all three bureaus: Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and then we use the mid score out of those. So a lot of people think it's an average, but mm -hmm. it's not. It's whichever one's the middle. Okay. So we use that middle score. And that's going to determine so much about your loan. It's going to determine what kind of program you can use. It's going to determine um, a lot of compensating factors. It's going to determine debt to income ratios, all these different things. So it's important to kind of know, one, um, where your credit's at, and then two, you know, what that kind of means. So right now, uh, COVID has really rocked the lending world, and it's tight we've tightened up a lot of restrictions mm -hmm. on credit because of COVID. But what we've seen in the last few months is some of those restrictions are rolling back. So on a conventional loan, a minimum credit score would be 620. So 620, that gets you in the door on a conventional loan. We can go as low as 600 on an FHA, mm -hmm. which is actually, you know, pretty, pretty good. I mean, it, it's 600 is not a great credit score, but if you're there, we can work with it. And then on a VA loan, um, surprisingly, there is no minimum on a VA loan. Wow. Um, you know, we tell people all the time, VA loans, um, the government wants a veteran to be able to buy a home and they're willing to kind of move heaven and earth to make it happen. Right. And so if you have credit that is kind of in that low 600s, you, you know, it's not over. Mm -hmm. You can definitely, there are options out there for you. And the beautiful thing is most lenders, we have access to tools and simulations and we can run scenarios that can actually tell you how to improve your credit. I was just going to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a beautiful thing. I mean, so my biggest thing is when someone comes to me and if they don't qualify or if I can't approve them, it's never a, hey, you're not approved. It's never you don't qualify. It's that, hey, you don't qualify right now. Mm -hmm. so we have a couple yeah. right now that we've been working with for a few months. Absolutely. And so if if I give steps and I give some guidance and I say, hey, if you follow these four things in six months, you can be ready. And um, we see people take advantage of that, but we also see people miss out on great homes and great opportunities because they don't take that advice, because they don't work at it. Right. And as you guys can see, it doesn't look like prices are going down. No. So if that $400,000 home today, it's probably going to be $500,000 a year from now. Right. So or tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> or tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, so credit, I mean, credit's huge. And I, I, my final thing on it would just be a lot of people, they use um, different online credit tools to kind of know where they're at. Those aren't always entirely accurate. Um, I have conversations with people all the time, and I ask them, hey, how's your credit? And they tell me, oh, it, you know, so-and-so website says it's 760. <laughs> and then we go to pull credit, and it's not 760. <laughs> so, you know, I would de definitely, if you are interested in buying a home and you don't really know where your credit's at, you know, let a loan officer pull your credit, you know, take a look at it and see what we can do to get you to where we need to get you to lend. And um, you may already all be there. You just don't know it yet. Absolutely. We've had some that, you know, didn't think that they were ready to buy yeah. and were. And we've had some reverse that think they're ready to buy and aren't ready to buy. But um, after having a good conversation with myself and Jesse, we have a few, like I said, um, that are working on those things right now. And uh, in the next couple months, we'll actually be able to start looking at houses. And, Absolutely. you know, it's just a matter of taking that step. Yeah. We can't do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do it for yourself. And um, how bad do you want to buy a house? Yeah. Which is another great question in this yeah. market. Right. Yeah. If someone's not ready, sit it out. Yeah. If you don't want to fight. Yeah, it's, it's not the market for people unless they're ready to fight. Yeah, the, the, deal, the deal is not to be had. There is no such thing as getting a deal mm. right, in this market. Um, well, I want to tell the story about Jessica getting her house. Yes. Because she's my daughter, mm. I was able to just give her, like, straight-up advice and not be 
feel like, oh, I should kind of stair step her. I need to be, you know, I don't want to tell her to waive inspection because, you know, that's, you know, because buyers are talking to their family who says, oh, don't waive inspection. That's really scary, et cetera. You know, because five years ago, you could not waive inspection. It wasn't something that we even thought of. No, that, yeah, it's unheard of. Yeah. But with Jessica, I was able to be like, okay, this is what you're going to do. Boom, boom, boom. And, of course, she would follow my advice. <laughs> <laughs> and we won the house. Mother knows best. And that's right. Yeah. So it was um, like one, one, and done. Mm -hmm. You know, she saw the one, and then we won it. And Jessica closed it, and it was amazing. And we closed early. Yeah. Because you pre-underwrite. Pre-underwrite. Get pre-underwritten, people. <laughs> it's <laughs> the way to go. It's so huge, and yeah. it, it helps when you're competing to be able to be like, well, you know, we could close earlier. Not that we, like, put you on the hook or anything, but yeah. it <laughs> is helpful. Okay. You know? I need seven days. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> no, we can't do that, guys. <laughs> but, but, but here's well. the thing that I loved about, you know, Jess and, and Cody is that they – it helps when you have a buyer who is quick about working with you. So there are certain people that you start working on the house, you start working with them on their deal, and they're not responding. You know, you text them, you call them, you email them, and you're not getting nothing back. Right. And you start to ask the question, like, do you really want this house? Mm -hmm. um, but if you as a buyer, like Jess, man, I email her something. She was on it. Yeah. You know, I text her on something. She was on it. And maybe that's because you're on her, too. <laughs> uh, but they made it so easy. And that's really when – when I look at the process, it's lender, buyer, agent, all working together. And if you can all work together and all communicate well, then Absolutely. this can be a pretty pain-free transaction. You know, you hear all these horrible stories about buying houses and things falling mm -hmm. through and it being, you know, 50-day closes and horrible things, but it doesn't have to be that way. No. You know? When I talk to a buyer, normally one of the first things I talk to them about is making sure that they have a team around them because mm -hmm. it is a really stressful time to buy right now. And so you're throwing everything out there, right? Like your dreams are on the line. You see your future family or your future business in this place. And if you surround yourself with the right people that can kind of head off typical items right now, yeah. issues that might come up in lending or issues that might come up with communicating with the other agent and the seller, and making sure that you have everybody together on the same team moving forward and working as a cohesive unit, mm -hmm. it makes it so much smoother than when you're fighting with, you know, the lender because the lender thinks that, you know, they know your job better. Yeah. Or when you're <laughs> arguing with the, you know, the buyer mm -hmm. because the buyer is, you know, having some crazy um, panic attack, which is <laughs> normal. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or you don't trust your agent. Right. right, exactly. Yep. So it's just a matter of having a good team surrounding you and Absolutely. making sure that you have people around you all the time. Yeah. Well, and, and with that, the team really, you know, um, I would say trust. You have yeah. to trust your agent. Yeah. Lisa right. and I were just talking about a Facebook post that I saw the other day. Oh, right. And Lisa happened to see it as well. And I had a good laugh because uh, someone who was going to be buying a house had put it out there in a Facebook group that their agent had suggested they offer $30,000 <laughs> over asking price. Yeah. And they didn't think that, they didn't understand why. Yeah. And they, they asked if, like, is that right? Yeah, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> and our first reaction was, no, no it should be 100000 <laughs> 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 Like, we're, we're only 30. I'm like, yeah. I need to know what house this is mm -hmm. because maybe somebody I – yeah. have as a buyer yeah. wants it um but that's really the thing if you don't have good trust i even tell my clients if there comes to a point where we don't have trust and you feel like i'm not doing everything i can for you then you have to be honest with me and let's have a conversation and it's okay to say you're not the right agent i don't always expect that i'm gonna work out for every buyer just like not every buyer is going to work out for me to work with. You know, it's one of those things. You have to mesh well with your real estate agent. Yeah. Um, it makes the process so much funner. But really in this market, trust. We know what we're doing. Well, most. <laughs> 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 right. But you. it's more important now than ever to just have faith. And if they say that 
if you really want a house and your agent tells you this is how you get it, yep. do it. Yeah. Yep. I actually had a buyer. He, we looked for three months, and this we ended up under contract last fall before this really crazy spike. But um, he didn't trust me in the beginning mm. just because he had never been through this process in that way, and his dad was heavily involved in real estate when he was a kid, so he's been around the business. Um, so I had to really earn his trust, and I did it by just being frank with him and saying that, you are going to have to waive things and you are going to have to overpay for, <laughs> for the house. And we started at a budget and I gave him the option. Either we could look at houses that weren't really what he wanted at that price point that he wanted to spend, or mm -hmm. he could increase his budget. And in the end, he chose to increase his budget. And when we finally, after three months of looking, found the one he looked at me in the house and he goes, waive everything. I'll pay $100,000 over and I'll pay for the low appraisal. I want this house. Mm -hmm. But because we had been through that process of some other houses that we didn't get, he was finally ready. And in the end, it was the right absolute house. right house for him. Yep. Well, and it is a process, I think, for buyers, right? You meet a buyer, you get them pre-approved through our favorite lender or one of our favorite lenders, and yeah. then... The favorite. <laughs> and then you go out and you meet them, and you're at your fir the first house, and they like it a lot, right? Wow. So then, okay, we're going to um, do a, maybe a pre-inspection, or they're going to bid 20000 over, and then they don't get it. Mm -hmm. So then you go to the next house, or, you know, a couple houses later, and then they have a little bit more um, education behind them. They kind of have a... More confidence what the market too. Is, a little yeah. bit more confidence. And so then it's okay, well, why don't we um, review the pre inspection? Maybe we should waive it. And so it's kind of like it's interesting to watch the growth of the buyers too and just see Absolutely. the progression as they go. Yeah. And yeah. And now it's it's even more exciting on closing day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's like, it's like we've been through battle together. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not just oh, I've shown you four to seven houses, which used to be the typical, you know, and then we write the offer and we get the house. Right. We're spending a little bit more time with our clients yeah. these days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> writing or, a few more offers. Or virtually, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I think I've done more, like, virtual showings in the last three months than I've ever done. Yes. And it's been insane. But yeah. buying a house sight unseen or putting yep. offers in on houses that you haven't set a foot in because you have the trust with your yep. agent and because Absolutely. you know that you, you know, have a strategy and a plan to work through. And so it's. I have some out-of-state buyers right now, and they have trusted me to write offers on houses that I've walked them through. <laughs> yeah. I make sure I show them every closet, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> counter tops, backsplash, you know, but that's the thing. And um, I was joking with one of my clients the other day. They're like, you've really gotten much better at this. <laughs> and I was like, I, do, I feel like I have gotten better at this too. Um, because for us agents, when the market changes and we're expected to, you know, we have to roll with the change. Yeah. And that was one of the new things with COVID really is yeah. more video and Zoom meetings. Yeah. Um, I still can't set up a Zoom meeting, but I can attend one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like what I hear for that we're trying to communicate to buyers is that it's going to be okay if you yeah. get the right people on your team, if you're working with somebody that you trust, if you have a good lender on your side, yeah. Yeah. if you have, you know, the plan in place to move forward. And even though the ability to change plans when yeah. the plan that you've set hasn't worked and kind of go back to the drawing board, yeah. but it is, it's going to be okay. It just might be a little bit longer process. It might not look what it looked like for your parents or for your friends from last year, yeah. but it's going to be okay and, and something will come up. Yep. Yep. It's a I feel like it's a lot more hands on deck right now. You know, it's like it's not uncommon for me to get a call on a Saturday night. You know, it's like, hey, we need a pre-approval letter. <laughs> right. And it's like, yeah. well, if it's nine o'clock at night and you need a pre-approval letter, well, let me pop on the laptop and we're going to send you one over, yep. you know, because yeah. you have to you have right. to everybody has to be fighting, you know, for these buyers yes. yeah and absolutely i think that's the thing that you guys do and i hope that i do is that 
you know, you provide that level of service that builds that trust, that they're probably not going to get, you know, in, in my instance, they're not going to get that from a, a major bank. Right. No. You know, you no. can't call your loan officer from Wells Fargo or, or <laughs> any one of these other places <laughs> yeah. on a Sunday. You know, they're not there. They're not no. picking up. And um, that's going to be really important. But you do. Oh, I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because when do we write offers? We write offers at like 7 o'clock at night yeah. yep. or 10 o'clock. 6 yeah. o'clock yeah. in the morning or on a Saturday yeah. or on a Sunday. Yeah. And you can't call those big ba banks, those, no. those big lenders that work banker hours. And so it's yeah. really nice to say, okay, I'm going to call the lender. I'm going to get a pre-approval right now. We can send over the offer. We don't have to wait until tomorrow or send over a generic, you know, oh, yeah, you're pre-approved, yeah. and it's just not specific to the property or anything. Right. So it's yeah. awesome having a local local guy who will answer the phone. Well, I love having agents that communicate with me, you know, that you guys are actually keeping me in the loop of what's going on, that, you know, when you're submitting an offer, you're not just, like, uh, you know, taking a blank pre-approval that I sent out previously. Like, you guys are actually saying, oh, yeah, we're putting another offer. We didn't get the last one. And that's – the communication is key. And that's what I think buyers need more than anything else. You need someone yeah. that's going to communicate mm -hmm. with you. You know, that if you have questions, they're going to answer them. You know, if you have concerns, they're going to walk you through it. Because this business is complicated. Yeah. Writing a contract, that's hard. Um, if you've ever seen a, a loan estimate, they're they're confusing. Yeah. They have numbers <laughs> and they have yeah. Uh, fees mm -hmm. and you're like it's I those don't those numbers they get me that's why I don't <laughs> do your job well you, <laughs> yeah. you know that's why I have people behind me they're like what does this mean you know what I mean like these are complicated things and oftentimes your home is going to be the biggest investment you have absolutely in your life it's your greatest asset you know it's the key to building generational wealth yeah it's the key to uh financing short-term wins in your life I mean you can send your, your kids to college with ec – I mean, all these things are possible through home buying. And so it's an important job that we have. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I see it more than just giving out people loans. It's helping people on their next journey in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing we get to be a part of. Absolutely. Well, and a lot of times when you're buying, it's because you're having a life change. Right. So it's it's an emotional process as well. And so not only are we helping you find a house, but we're guiding you to that house and also holding your hand, listening to the um, questions and the different emotions that come up because uh, you never know why somebody is buying a house. So it's important for us to always take that into consideration or when they're selling as well. Right. Well, no, talk about What's it like to sell a house yeah, right now, listings. Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, we actually have somebody in Florida that just bought a house in Florida. Oh. oh perfect. Okay. Say hi. Hello. Hello. Someone on the phone? We can't hear. Yeah. Technical difficulties. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Beep. You can be there now. I hear everybody. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi. Hi, Lisa and team. Hey. Hello. Who's this? How are you? Good. How this are is you? Katrina. Hey, Katrina. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what tips do you guys have for first time home buyers in this crazy market we're having right now? Oh, so many. Who wants to start? <laughs> you start. Well, I'll say a couple. Well, You've already said it. Listen to your agent. That's a good one. That's a good one. So I would say for first-time home buyers, which is about, what, 75 80% of my business on a yearly basis, um, number one, know your finances. Yeah. Talk to a lender. Get pre-approved. Don't start looking at houses mm -hmm. because they're pretty. Um, <laughs> you want to look at houses that you can afford. Because the last thing we want to do is show you a house mm -hmm. and then have to turn around and say, this is out of your budget. So um, definitely getting pre-approved first. Um, having some savings, yeah. it's important. And if you don't, that's why there is the DPA program. And I've had buyers use it. It is a great program. Um, in this market, it is a little bit harder to use, um, if I'm just being yeah. honest. Because yeah. buyers need to understand that 
you're going to be up against people who have cash from selling an, their other previous home. Um, but I have first-time buyers. Actually, I just closed two. Um, one's new construction, and the other was the condo I was talking about earlier. Yeah. So um, be prepared. Look at houses that are under your max budget. Mm -hmm. What else, Emily? Pack your patience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's going to be important to have <laughs> along with you. It'll help keep everybody just a little bit more calm. It's stressful, even though, you know, us as buyer's agents are trying really hard to head off stuff for you. Um, there's going to be curveballs always. And um, you might think that you wrote a really great offer. You're, I might think you wrote a really great offer, and then, boom, we just get slapped with, you know, something crazy out of left field. But pack your patience and try to keep a good attitude. It won't always happen. But um, but we'll get there. Yeah. 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 Next you know, you, you have to – really want to buy a house like we were saying earlier yeah. too um but if you really do want to buy a house we're going to get you to that point yep. guaranteed yeah. um that was something we were talking about lunch actually that i just thought of with this question is um you're buying your first house <laughs> not yeah. your dream house and so really getting that reality check of what you can afford in this market and a starting place. I talk to a lot of buyers, they want a house with a yard and a fence and four bedrooms, but they don't really need all that. And so sometimes a townhome or a condo even, yeah. even if you don't really wanna live in a condo, you know, after a couple of years, you can sell that condo, use the, um, <laughs> I was gonna say, the amount of money that you've earned. <laughs> I don't you know go. where that Equity, came from. Yeah. Um, you know, you can use the proceeds from selling the condo to step up. I still don't live in my dream home. Yeah. Oh, you put it out there. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. But right now it is because I can afford my mortgage. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's the thing is being happy where you are um, in, the, in the point of the process that you are. So if, if your agent says, well, we're going to have to look at condos, say, okay, I can live in a condo for three years. It's okay. I was gonna say, did I you have, have one any more, question. more questions? No, one more question. <laughs> um, so, what if you're a home owner in this market and you want to buy an investment property? That's a good question. Yeah. Well, that's a lender question. Oh, well, I have a lender answer. Look at you just <laughs> fielding uh -oh. those questions yeah, off. It. I thought Lisa was gonna have to go <laughs> in on that one. <laughs> no. So it is an, always an option to buy an investment property. Um, Unfortunately, with an investment property, uh, mm -hmm. investors and the market always deems them as more risky. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because um, if someone, for instance, lost their job, are they going to miss a payment on their primary residence or are they going to miss a payment on their investment property? Their, right. their investment, investment property. property. Uh, I, I, I got it right. You got it right. <laughs> it, was, it, wasn't, it was multiple choice. There was only two, <laughs> you know, but you got it. Um, she but, knows. And, but an investment property can be a great in investment. You know, um, it's going to require a more of a down payment, depending on your credit score, uh, 15 to 25 percent potentially. Um, interest rates are going to be much higher on an investment property. How much higher? Um, you know, depending on credit, depending on all those different things. Um, you're looking at a point, point and a half higher. Okay. So if rates today are in the low threes, you're going to be looking at rates on an investment property in the low to mid fours. Okay. And it's because the market has said that these are higher risk loans. Um, and same goes with refinances right now. Refinances, their rates are higher as well. Huh. Um, the market is just determining that those are riskier transactions than a typical purchase. So an investment property, if you currently own a home, an investment property can be a great um, addition to your portfolio. It can be a great way to earn extra income. Um, with the way that property is accumulating value very quickly, it could be a great tool to build um, another, to, to buy another investment property in a year because you right. can always take the equity out on that. But it is a little bit more of a challenge because we have to, you have to qualify with essentially two mortgages mm -hmm. in order to buy that investment property. And so depending so on- Would that be, sorry, would that be similar to saying 
Um, like I want to rent out the home I live in now and purchasing a new home for myself. Would that be the same process? It would be a little bit of a different process because great question. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a, that's a fantastic question. I was actually going to ask it. <laughs> <laughs> so good job. So that new home that you'd be buying, you wouldn't be buying it as an investment property or as a second home. You would be buying it as a primary residence. So that transaction would be just like a regular, typical purchase transaction of a home. Now, the downfall would be we would have to count your current mortgage, the one you have, that would be counted as debt against you because even though you may intend to rent it down the road, you don't have a history of renting it, and there's yep. no record of you renting it. So we would have to count, let's say it's $1,500 a month. That would be like having a $1,500 payment that we have to calculate in your debt-to-income mm -hmm. ratio. And so that can be a challenge, but it's um, that route is – easier maybe to go than buying an investment property i would say it's a little bit easier yeah to go that route. it is a little bit easier well what if you get like a rental like you put it out there on facebook like i'm going to rent out my house starting on such and so a day do you get credit for the rental income and is it 75 percent of the rental income so there's a there's a tricky calculation that honestly I let a computer do for me. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of my job is letting computers <laughs> doing my job for me. I plug in numbers, but there's a there's a there's a percentage that you get dinged for, and it's called a, a vacancy factor essentially. So what they assume is that if you're not in the home but you own it, there are going to be certain things that you have to pay. Let's say the washer dryer goes out. So even though you may make a hundred dollars on the home you might actually on paper be losing money on the home which isn't a huge deal if you make enough income to kind of cover that gap but i think what you're saying is if i plan to rent it out can i use you know maybe i have a lease agreement ready and i'm ready to go it gets really tricky i'll be real honest COVID has caused yeah. that to be such a restriction that you know if let's say you were going to rent to a son or a daughter or a family member um, investors are going to say no, yeah, not going to fly. Right. So really, if you were going to try to use your current property, you'd want to have a history of rental income. Now, th it's all different. Let's say, for instance, if you're buying an investment property that already has people living in it and there's already a lease agreement, well, essentially, we can look at that current lease agreement that's existing and we can just say, oh, that's mapping right over here. So that's a, you know maybe an easier part of that part of the transaction. Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing is, the beautiful thing is every situation is a little bit different. Every conversation is a little bit different. But um, if you are looking to buy a <laughs> second home or an investment property, um, you're going to want a little bit more in-depth conversations with a loan officer as opposed to uh, an <laughs> online lender. Please don't go to uh, an online lender for an investment or second property. <laughs> if I could say that again. Don't do go it. to an online lender for anything. Please yeah. don't. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, that's a great question. I don't though. recommend it. We Thank want you. someone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. What's the next topic? You want to talk about listings in this hot market? Sure. <laughs> sure, I do. Well, there. Well, here I'll give you a question. Yeah. So, if you're getting ready to sell. Yep. Is it still important to have a good real estate team behind you? and still have a great photographer and video behind you and really prepare your listing? Or can anyone just go sell a house real fast? Well, of course, I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we would all say. <laughs> yeah. If you think of it like, what does a builder do? A builder stages their model home. I mean, and if there's anyone out there in the world that shouldn't need to prepare, it's a builder. Mm. And even they stage. So yep. even they know the value of having something look sharp because most buyers can't visualize. I don't know. I've shown homes where the clear winner is the one that just needs paint and carpet. When you look at the space and the location, and they will pick the one that has the new paint and the new carpet because they can't visualize how nice the other house is going to be mm. if they would just do that work. So important to stage it's important to do the pre-inspection so that as a seller you're in control of what work gets done and how it gets done the buyer doesn't no offense 
to the buyers. No offense I'm taken. taken. <laughs> As I tell every listing agent when I get that call, yeah. no offense taken. <laughs> so it's like we don't want the buyer to insert themselves into the process of the repair. Because mm. there's a lot of stuff that a homeowner can fix. Absolutely. Like if the toilet has a leaky wax seal, I mean, they can fix that. You don't need someone to come and charge you 500 bucks when you can go buy the seal for 20 Yeah. So it's super important to prepare. I mean, if you were going to sell your car, which is not your biggest asset, you would vacuum it and you would have it detailed and you would maybe even have a mechanic look over it and you'd change the oil and you would do all the things so that when the buyer comes and they sit in the car, they're like, yeah, I can just drive off with this. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have your dried up McDonald's fries, you know, well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if you're a parent, maybe you would. Maybe. <laughs> hey. But, but, you know, you would, you would clean it up because the assumption is, is that when someone sits in the car and they look around and it's dirty, that you don't think, you know, a buyer doesn't go like, oh, but the engine's probably okay. The thought is, is like, wow, they couldn't even bother to clean up this, so how bad is the yeah. engine? Yep. So that's really the, you know, the big tip is that don't think that because it is such a seller's market that you should, you know, just don't do anything. Do what you can to make it awesome because then you get more buyers. You get the buyers that don't know how to visualize. You get buyers that will waive contingencies fighting for your house and then you get more money so you might feel like i get to be lazy but being lazy is not in your best interest nope not even in this crazy market nope i will say the houses that go for the most money over asking are the ones that are totally move-in ready yep staged beautifully because all the buyers are excited about it yeah exactly <laughs> there still has to be excitement to get that um, drive, for example, the condo that we went under contract on and sold or bought, I guess, <laughs> I helped them buy it, um, it was not staged, Oh, nothing was done, mm -hmm. and we ended up in the driver's seat for the inspection, um, and when I talked to the agent and asked him about a particular item, garbage disposal, oh, that's right. that had this much rust on the top of it mm. and the sink was leaking and there was a water bucket underneath and so we actually then instead of them just fixing it in the first place and I would have never even had to ask for it you know they had to replace everything and have a plumber come out and make sure you know I said I want to make sure the pipes are all working wow. that the sink doesn't have any cracks or holes in it and we want a new <laughs> garbage disposal put in. Yeah. That could be easily avoided um, yeah. from having to have that seller pay a repair person, a plumber, to come out and do all that if they would have just done it themselves. Yeah. Um, and the listing agent actually hadn't even looked at it, didn't even know how bad it was. Mm. Um, and I said, oh, <laughs> you, you don't check out your listings before you put them on the market? Eh, he told me it needed to be replaced. So, you know, that's <laughs> the other part of communication <laughs> that we've all been sure talking about. Um, even if you're listing a home, it's important to have that rapport with your agent. Um, of course, I'm sure you'd be like, don't disclose too much to me. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at the same time, it's important for you as the seller and your agent to know what needs to be done and fix those things so you don't have to cross those bridges later. Yep. Anything else on the listing side? Get amazing photos. Yes. And we know somebody. Yeah. <laughs> 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 amazing photos and video and floor plan and the 3D tour. And because there's some people that really want the floor plan, so like we try to cover every base. Yeah. So that the person that can't really visualize the floor plan by looking at the photos. I mean, we try to organize the photos in order of, mm -hmm. like, you walk through the door and this would be the logical. But it's uh, it's hard to understand. Yeah. So, you know, we include the floor plan. We've got the Matterport 3D tour. I mean, especially with COVID, you don't really want extra people mm -hmm. coming through the house. Absolutely. You know? And I think that as buyer's agents, you're probably like. I love the 3D like Matterport. I mean, I look yeah. at it. Before I go to the house, because then I have a good understanding of what the layout really looks like if it's available to me. 
And actually, for some clients, I can send it yep. to them and I'll say, hey, look at this. I know this is just not going to work for us. This house yeah. is out. And then it saves us the time yep. from having yeah. to go view it yeah. yep. um, and try and get in because getting uh, uh, showing appointments is not easy all the time these days. I had one today, came up this morning, and by I looked at it. And by the time that I went, you know, 30 minutes later, luckily that time was still available that I wanted, but everything around it was already gone. Wow. So, you know, not going to house – right now, that's another thing is, like you had brought up, not – having more people than needed in a house yep. as a buyer be prepared that we're not going to just go willy-nilly see all the houses there's not that many to see anyways <laughs> 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 we're lucky if we get one a week um but really looking at the photos determining with the Matterport or the layout if it is something that you would actually really consider yeah yeah and definitely i would say also for buyers they should do drive-bys yep if there's time, I know that a lot of times there's not time, but yeah. I'd say 50% of the time a buyer will be like, oh, I don't like the neighborhood anyway. Yep. Mm. So it's And much do it in the evening when it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> Daytime and nighttime. Drive by mm -hmm. four times, no, and then we'll show you. No, I'm just, So yeah. that no, you can true. see it yep. in different light and check it out when everybody's home from work if they're parking. You yeah. Know? Yes, and you especially in condos. Down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Or on I the weekend. I feel like people in this market are willing to look past some of the really quality of life things that you would normally look for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that buyers need to kind of decide. Like, what are my non-negotiables? Mm -hmm. Because, like, yeah, I, I think you're allowed to have some non-negotiables. Like, you're allowed to say, yep. you know, I need a backyard. But then you need to set your expectation of what, what does that look like then. Right. And what are you going to – maybe give up to have that backyard. Exactly. Is Park it going to be location, a mm -hmm. bedroom? Yeah. yeah. What kind of parking? I mean, mm -hmm. little stuff like that really matters. Yeah. And I just don't know if people have the benefit of having everything they want like they used to. No. Um, yeah, not now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you guys know it's not just people in the $500,000 range. No, it it's doesn't matter. It's people in the million-dollar yeah. range. Yep. Yeah. You know, every mm -hmm. spot is competitive. Th actually, the I would say over a million that uh, 1 million to about 1.56 mm. uh, is a very competitive market in North King Snohomish County. Uh, there's a lot of large properties that are coming up on the market. They're beautiful homes and they are priced at that. Um, I actually have lost a couple mm. and my, my buyers are cash. Wow. <laughs> cash <laughs> yeah. and uh you know i would have never thought before that looking at a 1.4 house and my buyers being able to go over that asking price uh a hundred thousand and it ended up selling three hundred thousand over wow. asking price and then the other one was listed at 950 and we came in on again a hundred thousand over because that's what they're comfortable with right. and so they they don't want to go three hundred thousand so that's okay too, and don't have an agent who says no. You can, you have to, whatever you're at, I will like work with you at. But you have to, uh, you know, be serious. Um, at the same time, willing to write that offer and try getting it. Uh, so we wrote it. We saw it the day it came on the market. It had only been a, on the market a couple hours. We wrote the offer a hundred thousand over, and within thirty minutes, there was a one point two million dollar offer all cash as well wow. um, on a $950,000 house. So we've been beat twice <laughs> now, no. um, but that is the market. So even I, I'm telling my clients at the lower end, even those people who do have the million, mm -hmm. they're struggling in this market just as hard or harder because things are selling for even more over asking mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Competitive, get some good agents. Get right a good here. lender. I, I know yes. a, I know some good agents right here. Yeah. Uh, right there, right there. <laughs> no, I mean, I think definitely having, you said it earlier, Ashley, I think the biggest thing is trust. Having people that, that, is. E that can be honest with you and you can be honest with them. Um, you may be in contact with us for 30 days or 40 days or two months, but the interactions that we have 
are going to shape and transform your life for years to come. Mm -hmm. So find people that you can work with. And that's why I think like this relationship is so important to me because if you build that rapport and that trust with somebody and then you send them to me, I feel a responsibility and vice Absolutely. versa. And so it's this, it's this thing where we all have to have trust that like, man, we want what's best for these people. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be professional. We're going to work hard for you. But have a little bit of fun too. But have a little <laughs> bit of fun too. Absolutely. Because it's buying a house should be a fun thing. It should. It should. Even in a crazy market, we can have a good time. That's right. I don't know. So anything else? Yeah. Are we good? Well, I don't know. Still what do you there? Think? Are we What's the wave? Let's keep going if you want. Oh. Jay was waving, so I thought we were done. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, you had asked about um, what we think about how buyers are being forced to uh, waive contingencies oh, and what yes, we think about that's that. That's a good, yeah, good topic. Yeah, what do you guys think about waiving contingencies? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> makes me want to throw up every think? time. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I think it kind of goes hand in hand with the progression of the the process, right? So a buyer at the beginning may not be ready to waive any contingencies yeah, it takes at a few. all. Um, and then at the end, they still might not be willing to waive something. Yep. I know that like the financing contingency is mm -hmm. a huge one to waive. makes me sick to my stomach. And I, I have a super serious conversation with them. I'm like, you mm -hmm. have to talk to your lender. And you get it in to, writing. You have, to, <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a conversation yeah. with your lender and, and be really straightforward. Like, is have they been fully underwritten? Do Absolutely. you know all of the, the T's have been crossed and the I's have been dotted? Because you don't want something to pop up day 25 and suddenly, you know, you're in trouble because you've waived that contingency. So, again, it's team, right? So yep. making sure that everyone's communicating well. Um, but contingencies are tough right now for buyers and you just have to kind of go through the process a little bit and if you're not comfortable waiving them then that's okay too yep mm -hmm. absolutely um i have some buyers i'm working with right now who will not waive uh the inspection contingency it's very important to them they're first time home buyers and it's smart i you know i've never had to buy a house without waiving an inspection mm -hmm. so I totally understand, and I think that's part of it, too, is just talking with them and really making sure that they're comfortable with it. And if they're not, then we, we move on. So um, what we're doing is actually only looking at houses that have been pre-inspected because that way, mm -hmm. unless it's a house that they really like a lot and they think, like, oh, this, this could definitely be it, and then we would ask for a pre-inspection and go in and mm -hmm. do it um, so that we at least have the opportunity um, if you don't know what a pre-inspection is, if you're listening in on us, um, that is where you as the buyer can pay an inspector before writing your offer and go into the house and have it. It's kind of a shorter inspection. It's not as thorough as the full inspection, and it costs a little bit less. Um, but that way, you know, you can look over those major items, any worries that you have. But um, with the sellers doing the pre-inspections nowadays, it's been really nice for buyers yeah. because at least we have the knowledge of what's going to be an issue maybe down the road. Yeah. The other thing, though, as as especially first home, first time home owners, there I can say it. Um, I tell clients is that there's little things that are always going to be needed to be done in a house. There's maintenance. Um, I have to get new gutters this year. Woohoo! You know, yeah, yeah. Um, and fascia board. It's starting to rot. Uh, so I told my husband, it's time. But that's the thing. You're always going to have things come up. There's always going to be little things. Even in new construction, we find things. Mm -hmm. But it's the major things. And you have to really ask yourself, is this something that I'm going to walk away from a home, you know, because of? If it's the foundation, well, heck, yeah, yeah. we're running. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've had a couple of those recently, and we just said, nope, nope. Um, you know, roofs, yes, they're expensive. They are. Um, plywood has gone up a lot right now. You know, so those things you do have to take into consideration as well right now because the cost of building materials has gone up. 
But if it's a leaky toilet, like you were saying, yeah. or some caulking behind the yeah. kitchen sink, or you don't like the tile in the bathroom or the paint, those things should never be something that you walk away from a house from if the rest of it works. They can be updated over time. Yeah. If it's falling down, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> You know, and and the thing is, I think, um, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was talking too much, lost too much air. <laughs> it's like one of those things, like, I think if you see it, if you're scrolling through any number of the, you know, online listing sites like Zillow or Redfin or whatever, and, and you see a home that's been on the market for like 45 days, and it looks too good to be true because the price is, you know, it's 265 probably too good to be true and mm -hmm. you know just setting your expectations and like you said you know having your non-negotiables mm -hmm. having the things that like man yeah the baseboards need to be painted we can do that like that's not a big deal yeah um but yeah the foundation is cracked eh, we may have some issues there <laughs> especially yeah. if we want financing <laughs> that is true <laughs> oh you know what jesse that's actually a great question for people listening in maybe um the different types of financing conventional FHA, VA, we've touched on. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the appraisal, mm -hmm. uh, yes, we haven't really gone there. Um, so what's the difference between an appraiser looking at a conventional loan and an FHA? So conventional, so the way most lenders work is that I personally, as a lender, I am unable to talk to an appraiser. Right. It's I could lose my license. We are not allowed to um, affect value in any way. Uh, I can't call up an appraiser and be like, hey, this house over here is going for this amount. This is what we needed to appraise for. That's how the market crashed in 06, 07. We don't do that anymore. Um, <laughs> so when we submit, uh, let's say I get a contract and we put an appraisal order in, it's going to go into a pool of appraisers. We don't get to pick the appraiser. We don't get to say, I want that appraiser. It gets assigned and they'll actually bid for them. They'll come back. We'll usually get two or three offers with due dates. And the conventional and FHA appraisers are all in the same pool. So they are all the same people looking at a conventional and FHA appraiser appraisal. For the most part, the requirements for conventional and FHA are going to be pretty much the same across the board. Uh, they're going to go and they're going to be looking for the same things, um, the same things that are going to throw off an FHA appraisal. Um, you know, um, structural issues are going to be the same thing that affect a conventional appraisal. There's very little difference in, in regards to that. Where you get into some differences is when you look at a VA appraisal. VA appraisers, they tend to be, um, you know, they, they scrutinize the property a little bit more heavily. And a lot of that has to do because they have the veteran, they have the military um, members um, kind of their best interest at heart. So they're going to pick stuff apart. And a lot of people fear VA appraisers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say, oh, it's a VA appraisal. Um, but I'm going to be real honest. I have not had bad experiences with VA appraisals. I think when they go in. Well, I on the buyer side, I had a great one. We got it down $15,000, so <laughs> I was happy. Well, it, it, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, it, they can be they can be strict and they can scrutinize the property. But the thing I always love is they're going to look out for your best interest if you are a VA buyer. Um, they, they're going to go through it, the same fine tooth comb, but here's the deal. If a house isn't going to appraise for VA, it's not going to appraise for FHA or conventional and the same other way around. You know, I think it's important right now that, um, I know, like I said, people out there looking for deals, but if you see, you know, a home listed and it says cash or conventional only, what they're really saying is cash, cash. that it's not going to appraise for uh, for conventional either because it's just it's not you know we as a lender we're never going to lend on something that has structural issues um we're never going to take that liability upon ourselves we even had a situation a couple weeks ago where we couldn't extend lending on a property because it had a barn that was falling apart <laughs> not even the main house but a, a barn over here and in order to make that transaction work we would have had to have that barn demolished and removed from the premises in order to make it work because it's a it's a liability. It's not structurally sound. Right. And so as a lender, those are different things that we have to throw into consideration 
But between VA, FHA, and conventional appraisals, I think you're going to get pretty much the same answers across the board um, with the big issues. Issues of value may vary, but in this market, I really feel like appraisers are looking at homes and they're saying, hey, if this is what the market is dictating this home is worth, that's kind of what they're going for. And there's a lot of comps out there to support it. You know, I think if we didn't have the comps, we'd be in trouble. But uh, we got 700 square foot Ramblers going for $550,000. <laughs> and so that's the reality. And so that's what appraisers are right. looking at. And plywood costs like $1,000 a plank. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's worth it just in materials alone. That's it, right. it is, absolutely. <laughs> well, and with appraisals, um, we are seeing some come in low. I haven't had any recently that came in low. I haven't had any come in low. I haven't. Yeah. So, you know, we haven't. But I have been hearing of them happening from other agents and things. Um, so that was one of the topics that we were talking about earlier, too, is with the low appraisal, you can set money aside. So obviously with my buyers that only have the 5% down for conventional or 3.5 FHA, we can't do that. So we're using a different strategy. <laughs> like I said, it depends on your situation. We There's lots of different strategies we can use. But um, for buyers that do have 20 or more percent down, what I've been doing is as we pick a house and we're writing that offer, I calculate what I feel the house is going to go over. Mm -hmm. Then I comp out the neighborhood, see what solds I have, and give it you know, a good estimate of where I think that the appraisal could come in at its lowest so that we can set that amount aside. Yeah. Um, whether it's 20000 that's what I did the other day with a buyer. Um, and it happened to be that the listing agent let me know that there is another townhome in the complex that is under contract, and it appraised at 415 We were going to submit the offer at 450 So... What we did is instead of writing at 450, we wrote at 435, and then gave 20,000 to a low appraisal, mm. because that's a better offer than 450, not yeah. mm -hmm. taking into consideration a low appraisal. Yeah, and I would have had it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had it, <laughs> except right at the and I got the offer in uh, 11 minutes before it was due because they moved up the. Uh, oh, day yep. uh, so it was Sunday morning 10 a.m. we're at the <laughs> house I'm on my phone and I'm like oh uh, the offer review is at noon and so we left I ran home wrote the offer got a hold of the agent thank heavens and he was great that's the other thing um, buyers I think should know too is that um, a lot of listing agents will have that open conversation with the buyers agents so that we are prepared with our offer. Um, not all of them will tell me the exact amount. Um, you know, it's more of a conversation of, well, this is what other agents have asked me. And so that way we have somewhat of an idea. We're not going in blind writing this offer. Um, and I love building rapport with the listing agents and having those conversations with them because that if that's what's, you know, <laughs> If I have to kiss there, you know what? <laughs> I will do it for any length of time uh, so that our offer might get accepted. I have no problem doing that. Um, you know, but it's really that communicating. And so the agent did tell me, well, I think you're going to be competitive. You know, I would rather the 435 and the 20,000. Um, we had an investor squeak one in after us, and they escalated to 470, I think he said. Um, wow. and it was listed at 379. So yeah. there's that 100,000 mark that I always say. That hurts. <laughs> I just want to make a comment. Ashley sounded like a Scooby-Doo villain a minute ago. <laughs> I would have got it if it wasn't for those <laughs> dang investors. It's We're not Scooby-Doo villains, though. <laughs> no. We really will help you buy a house. Yeah, I'm not a villain. No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, that is funny, though. Yeah. yeah. I do voices. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I don't know. I feel like we got a lot accomplished. Today. We did. 
covered a lot of ground. Should be a part two someday. So sure. Part two. Part we solved like world problems today, guys. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Not a big I deal. I can sleep well tonight. <laughs> At least, well, housing ho- world problems. Where could people, you know, obviously on Facebook, but how could people reach out to you guys if they wanted to reach out to you? So why don't we all give our cell phones? Yeah, we can do that. I'm four two five three six six nine three five three. And say that again slower. Oh. <laughs> Well, it is on my page, though. Yeah, that oh, is true. That's her face is in the corner. <laughs> I mean, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So it's in it's in the Facebook thing. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm Ashley Ratcliffe because I don't even know if we said our names in the beginning. We now I'm not. thinking that's about true. that. <laughs> I'm Ashley. I'm one of the buyers agents on Lisa Manners' team, um, and you can reach me at four two five three one eight two six five eight. And I'm Emily Charta, Lisa's other buyer's agent, and 425-231-2153. Beautiful. And my name is Jesse Holcomb. This is my radio voice (laughs) Uh, with Premier Mortgage Resources. And you can reach me at 253-549-8601. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having us, Jay. This was fun. Fun times. Super fun. Hopefully those out there listening learned a little something. And if you guys have any other questions or questions that are specific to you, feel free to give us a call. We're always around to chat. Absolutely. For real.